It's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii. 24-7, 365. Swimming in the ocean anytime. Take a leap. Aloha kako, and welcome to another episode of Foundations for Healthy Generations. I'm your host, Lorilyn Salamanca. Today we'll be highlighting some public health concerns, initiatives, issues from the State Department of Health. Um, today we have Dr. Maya Rockymore and Ms. Lola Irvin to talk with us to talk about our state's new Hawaii State Physical Activity and Nutrition Plan. Dr. Rockymore is a nationally renowned expert in health and wellness. She directs Leadership for Healthy Communities, a national program of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, as a part of her responsibilities as President and CEO of Global Policy Solutions, a consulting firm based in Washington, D.C. Lola Irvin is the Project Manager for the Chronic Disease Prevention and Management Division of the State Department of Health. Lola works with uh, the community to prevent and manage chronic diseases and their contributing factors. This division has recently published our second Hawaii Physical Activity and Nutrition Plan. So let's have a listen about the plan. In Hawaii and the rest of the United States, there is a lack of physical activity and healthy eating practices among the majority of adults, adolescents, and children. More than two-thirds of adults and youth in Hawaii do not meet the national guidelines for physical activity. Fruit and vegetable consumption is also below recommended amounts, with two-thirds of adults and youth eating fewer than five fruits and vegetables a day. Insufficient physical activity, combined with unhealthy eating, can substantially increase the risk of health problems such as obesity, high blood pressure, heart disease, diabetes, cancer, and arthritis. In 2011, almost 62% of Hawaii adults were overweight or obese. This stresses the need to find ways to promote and enhance opportunities for physical activity and good nutrition among Hawaii residents. Additionally, 82% of adults in Hawaii have at least one chronic disease, and over half have two or more chronic diseases. The Hawaii Physical Activity Nutrition Plan, or PAN Plan, describes strategies to increase physical activity and healthy eating with the long-term goals of reducing overweight, obesity, and chronic disease among all Hawaii residents. This means healthier residents, lower medical costs, and a better quality of life for us and our children. Its purpose is to provide a framework for policymakers, public and private organizations, and community members to work together to educate, advocate for policies, and build an environment that allows our residents to embrace a physically active and nutritionally sound lifestyle. The PAN plan was created by and for community-based organizations, public health professionals, elected officials, and other decision makers to address obesity prevention, physical activity, and nutrition in our wonderful state of Hawaii. Today we'll be talking about the Hawaii Physical Activity and Nutrition Plan, and I have a copy right here, and also the summit to help launch it. And we'll be talking about how, why it's important to work towards policies, systems, and environmental changes to help the citizens of Hawaii lead healthier lives. And here we have Lola Irvin. And so Lola, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the PAN plan? Okay, the Fiscal Activity and nu Nutrition Plan, as that's known also as the PAN plan, covers the years 2013 to 2020. It's actually an update of a previous state plan. This plan was developed with input um, with from over 200 people that were actively engaged, and they chose 22 priority objectives that they recommended the state work on so that we can eventually get to that point where everybody has the opportunity to be physically active and also to eat healthy. Yeah, no, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I know that the summit is, is taking place right. this week. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll help launch the plan. So I'd like to hear a little bit more about what will be going on at the summit. Okay, at the summit we'll have this really diverse group of stakeholders. And the plan covers everything from the built environment where we live and work and play um, to the school environment um, and also um, work site, the healthcare, and the media. 
And so um, with this diverse group, we'll be looking at these 22 objectives and discussing then how we collectively can work together to implement and to reach these objectives. So we're really excited. Um, it's a real great launch for the plan to have um, over 250 people come and work together. Well, that's great to hear, and it's, I think, that recurring theme of working together, mm -hmm. bringing in stakeholders from different organizations, having that variety of input is really key yes. in having a successful you know, execution of the plan, yes. that it's not just good on paper, it's also right. viable and feasible in real life. Yes. So we have Dr. Rocky Moore as well here today, and she will be the keynote speaker for the summit. Um, it's really a pleasure to meet you today, Dr. Rocky Laura Lynn, it's a pleasure to be with you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more about what the significance of being a participant and a keynote speaker in the, the summit for you. Well, first I'd like to congratulate the state of Hawaii for the fabulous PAN plan. Uh, they're a model for the United States of America because they're at the cutting edge of states that recognize that we have to actually have a strategic investment in prevention as a part of ensuring the long-term quality of life uh, for Hawaii residents, but also ensuring the long-term fiscal health of the state. Uh, because when you have healthy people, you also have lower health care costs. And so congratulations for a fantastic plan and the fact that it had so many stakeholders involved in its development, you're absolutely right. It's more likely to be a success. So I'm here uh, to be a cheerleader. And I'm also here uh, to also bring to the state of Hawaii more information about what's taking place around the issue of healthy eating and active living nationally. As a part of the work that we do with Leadership for Healthy Communities, we work with states across the country. Uh, and so to share that information about what's going on in other places with Hawaii will mean that uh, you know, we'll be able to uh, even advance the work, I think, even more, uh, more so than it's being done, and also to help inform the implementation of the PAN plan. Right. Thank you. Um, and a chronic disease is such a, uh, or the, the, the consequence of chronic disease is mm -hmm. such a drain on financial resources and just resources in general. And I know that you have a, a personal story about chronic disease, so if you yeah. wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about that. Yeah, well, what's interesting is it not only has financial implications for the state because healthcare costs money, uh, but it also has personal implications. And frankly, even though I do this work, several years ago, I had to face my own personal uh, crisis when it came to health. I was weighing in at 200 pounds, 60 pounds heavier than I am now. Wow. And even though I do this work and I know better, you know, I convinced myself that my environment was controlling me, that there was nothing that I could do, that I was traveling around so much. And, and I had to come to grips with the fact that, it, it, there, that I could better control my environment uh, as well uh, and so you know I made the personal commitment uh, to make changes and I've always uh, been physically active so even at 200 pounds that meant that uh, even though I was going to the gym three days a week the fact of the matter is I was consuming more in calories and fat than I was able to burn off in physical activity so I really had to address the nutrition side of the of the equation and so basically I made a commitment to cut out the processed foods. I cut out the carbohydrates, including the sugars and uh, certainly the breads and all of the other very high, uh, high, high highly processed uh, foods, uh, particularly the carbohydrates and the sugary drinks. I cut out the sodas. Uh, and so, and while I say cut out, uh, I mean that, you know, I basically uh, largely eliminated them from my diet. That doesn't mean that I don't occasionally indulge, uh, but it's not something that's a part of my everyday existence. And, and the weight just fell off, literally uh, fell off uh, when I controlled my environment. I just flew 10 hours out here to Hawaii to be with you, uh, and I brought my fruits on the plane with me. Uh, I brought an apple, a couple of oranges, and some cherries, and I chomped all the way here. Uh, whereas before, I would have you know, gone to the airport and then been at the mercy of whatever was there for me, which was likely not good for my health. Right. And I also started cooking more. And that's it a big difference, I ate out a lot. Yeah, no, that, that makes a huge difference, yeah. I think. And it does take some planning, but the rewards, you know, the, mm -hmm. the weight melting off is, is, is key. That's yeah. right. So um, I, I truly believe that, yes, part of it is making our own choices, making mm -hmm. our own decisions and planning. So it's some accountability for our mm -hmm. actions. And then there's also the environment. That's so right. I, I could imagine traveling when you go to the airport mm -hmm. and all you have to choose from 
like if you know, you're know living a fast-paced life, um, are fast food choices. That's right. And when those establishments don't offer anything healthy. Laura Lynn, the fact of the matter is, is that many communities are like airports, that the choices simply are not there. All you have surrounded by are the fast food restaurants, the unhealthy options. If you're looking in the vending machine, you got the high fat, high calorie candies and sodas. Yes. And there are no choices that are healthy. You can't get water. You can't get fresh fruits and vegetables. And so what we have in, in many communities across America is what they call an obesogenic environment, yeah. an environment that actually directs people towards poor health. Uh, and so what we've got to do as a nation is not only take personal responsibility for our choices, but also on a societal level, change those policy and environmental factors that are actually contributing to our poor health and undermining the quality of life. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Yeah. And hearing these examples from you know the rest of the country as well is, is enlightening, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Lola, Let's talk a little bit more about policy within our state. Um, tell us about what's been going on, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, referring back to what um, Dr. Rockamore said, one of the objectives in the plan as we l look forward is that 80% um, of our farmers markets would accept EBT transaction because, as she said, mm -hmm. um, the fresh fruits and vegetables need to be affordable, available, and accessible. So that's something looking forward, and we're working towards that with a lot of partners and something we'll be discussing at the summit. The other is, if we look at the successes, Hawaii has really moved ahead in terms of what we're doing with our environment. And so at the county level with coalition support and at the state level with groups like AARP, and our injury prevention program, they've really rallied and we have um, the complete streets laws that have been passed and also at the county level, um, all the counties have passed resolutions and for the city and county of Honolulu has actually passed a bill to support complete streets. That's a concept that says our streets are not just to move cars, but our streets are to move people. So people will have the option whether they walk, they bicycle, or they take mass transit, or they ride in cars. Um, and then safe routes to school, we have two policies that have been passed in our state. And safe routes to school provides that children will have the option to walk and bicycle to work, not just um, ride a car. And you know, a lot of us used to walk or bike to and from school. And now a lot of our schools are designed for um, quick movement of cars. Mm -hmm. And so safe routes to school provide funding and so we can have the education, the outreach, as well as some monies to change that environment so the options will be available and safe for our kids to walk and bike. Yeah, definitely. It's not so much that these are things to give special treatment, but it's to get rid of the barriers mm -hmm. that yes. um, make it unsafe to yes. walk on the roads or to bike. I have a friend who would bike from you know downtown Honolulu to the Salt Lake area, and she said that Biking on Nimitz Highway was, you know, she yes. felt threatened because cars would be just zipping by mm -hmm. and at some point there was no bike lane yes. for her to, to safely uh, bike through. You know, Laura Lynn, uh, a lot of people s seem to think that these policy and environmental changes that we're talking about will actually constrain the choices, but w they'll actually expand the choices. And so not only on the food side, uh, we'll have more access to different kinds of foods that support your health, but on the physical activity and uh, the built environment side, there'll be more choices like your friend so that she can bike in safety uh, and, and people can walk in safety without being threatened by being run over by a car. I know. that's that's. Crazy, um, and then going back to obesogenic um, environment mm -hmm. and other um, areas or other counties doing, um, you know, policy and legislation. I know that I've heard that uh, LA County, the mayor has established a moratorium on new fast food restaurants uh, being built and established in this uh, particular neighborhood mm -hmm. because it was um, they had so many, mm -hmm. but they didn't have access to grocery stores right. or mm -hmm. maybe not the full grocery store but just 
shops right. where they can get healthier choices, mm -hmm. really. That's right. And those areas of the country are called food deserts. Uh, even though you have a high density of fast food restaurants in many of these locations, the people that live in these places actually don't have access to fresh foods, mm -hmm. fresh fruits and vegetables especially, uh, because they don't have the full service supermarket that has those things available. And so you literally can map uh, on a map, uh, you know, where the high density of the, uh, the fast food is and where the high incidence of heavy chronic disease is. Uh, oh. Not only obesity, uh, but also related chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes and, and hypertension. Uh, and so, you know, there's no reason that we should have communities that by design create poor health. We need to do better for our people. And that's what the PAN plan is about. Uh, ensuring that no matter where you live, no matter what zip, co zip code you're in, uh, that you actually have access to the full uh, spectrum of supports that you will need uh, to live a healthy life and to have a better quality of life. No, oh, I think that's, it is, it's so important to, to have this strategy, I think, and mm -hmm. I believe, yeah. Um, now, what about, um, I think other, um, efforts to bring down the rates of obesity and promote mm. physical activity? Well, starting early in life is really important. And in Hawaii, we have one school system. And so it's been fantastic that Hawaii has been recognized as having um, the most comprehensive wellness guidelines. And those were enacted in 2007 by the Department of, um, the Board of Education and the Department of Education. And the wellness guidelines, um, by 2011-2012 school year, over 77% of the schools were implementing it. And it's a really um, comprehensive set of rules that say, okay, when you serve school food um, at the cafeteria, it needs to meet USDA guidelines. Um, if there's food that we call competitive that's outside of the cafeteria, there are nutrition guidelines. So fat, sugar, and salt mm -hmm. can't be the first ingredients, and there's mm -hmm. also caloric restriction. Mm -hmm. um, and we also grew up at a time when a lot of um, our um, organizations we belonged to in school sold food, um, and they weren't healthy. That's right. And mm -hmm. it really is about changing the norm on our school campuses so that they're health-promoting campuses. Also, physical activity can't be used as punishment. And there are recommended hours for health education, nutrition education, and physical education. There's also a requirement so that time is allowed for faculty and staff to be trained um, through professional development to follow the wellness guidelines. Because as part of the support, we really need to institutionalize mm -hmm. it and they need that time mm -hmm. to get trained. Um, so we are really thrilled that um, DOE has been so progressive to adopt and um, public, public health has mm -hmm. an obligation too for mm -hmm. the health of our citizens and our children. Um, so we work with the DOE to support the wellness guidelines. Right. And I just think that you know, with these large system um, changes and policies and just environmental changes, uh, this sets up great modeling for individual citizens, for families, mm -hmm. so that they can then translate that to you know, mm -hmm. their home practice, really. You know, um, one in three children, uh, not only in Hawaii, but also nationally, uh, are uh, overweight or obese. Mm -hmm. uh, we are raising the first generation of children who are expected to live shorter and sicker lives than their parents uh, because of the obesity epidemic. And so we owe it to our kids. And when you think about it, many kids spend most of their days in the school environment. Uh, we owe it to our kids to ensure that when they're in that environment, no parent sends their kid to school so that they actually are fed things that can make them sick and can shorten their lives over the long term. So we owe it to our children uh, to make sure that schools are healthy environments that support their full health, that they have access, access to physical activity and also nutritious foods, not only in the lunch line, but also the competitive foods and the vending machines and then other places on the school campus. So Hawaii is in the forefront uh, of doing a lot of things that are important to ensure that our kids have a better, better and healthier future. Great. Mm -hmm. And then what would you tell, um, tell families who are watching us today about what they can do, I guess, at home with their kids? What suggestions might you have? Yeah, so I, I would really urge people to be careful. Um, you know, the marketing, uh, all of the commercials that you see on television, and I know because I've been there, you know, you see that juicy hamburger, you want to go out and get it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that we have to pay attention to how our food is prepared and what the, the, the content of it is in terms of, 
you know, not only the salt content, but also the calories and the fat. And so I would urge uh, Hawaiians to look at uh, and, and pay attention to labels uh, because they actually matter. I would urge them to go out less often and to cook more. Uh, and so that would be another thing that I would urge you to consider. And I would also urge you to think twice uh, about the consumption of sugary beverages. Uh, if you're drinking uh, sugary sweetened beverages, you know, like full sugar sodas on a, on a daily basis, then that's probably too much. Uh, and so, you know, I, I went the extreme, I cut it out, uh, you know, I now have it maybe on Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, think about, uh, you know, the portions uh, that you consume and how often. And so, you know, I would encourage you to, and also, walk as a family. Get out there and get physically active. That's what I would say. And I would also um, piggyback on that and say walk um, 30 minutes a day for adults at minimum um, and build it into the schedule. So I know a lot of people say, I'm busy, I'm busy, but there's things we can do like take the stairwell, park a little further, or if you're going to spend time talking to your friend, talk story while you walk. Um, also for children, 60 minutes of physical activity. And so a lot of our kids are sitting and it's a great thing to do to walk as a family and to walk the dog as a family, you know, and build them some fun. Um, and we live in an environment where we can be physically active all through the year, a beautiful environment. And what a shame um, if we're not taking advantage of it and also teaching our children to appreciate it because um, they do follow our examples. Definitely. And um, if mom and dad are having fun and showing that it's a great thing to do, they're likely to follow. Thank you so much for those tips. I know that for myself, I'd like to share with um, clients that fe the feeling of fullness is not just actual, you know, the volume of the food, the calorie of the food, mm -hmm. there is the smell, there's mm -hmm. the feel, mm -hmm. it's a full on experience. Mm -hmm. And so when you cook more, you get more of that. Mm -hmm. And in my family growing up, you know, the matriarchs of our family, they always, um, when they would prepare the food, they didn't really eat much after. Mm -hmm. I, so that kind of made me mm -hmm. a believer that like, okay, I need to cook more so I don't eat as much. <laughs> well, you're tasting throughout, right? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> There's that too. I'm not I know that's what that. I do. <laughs> yeah. So having that enjoyment really um, counts towards and the feeling of you're fullness. You're talking about mindful eating too. And there's the social eating that we do. Yes. Well, it's interesting, and I have a brief story. My sister went down, my sister and I went to visit Argentina a couple of years ago, and we went to a restaurant, and, you know, we ordered a meal. When we walked in the restaurant, there was already a large family there eating, and they were being served their appetizers. We sat down, and we shoveled through our food. And when we got up, they were just getting through their main course. And so I think as a society, we eat mindlessly and yeah. we eat fast because we're driven by the clock in so many instances. And that has a contribution uh, to uh, you know, undermining our health. And so being appreciative of the process, you know, the, the smell, the presentation, the community uh, that built, is built around food and, and the culture of food uh, is a very important part, I think, of also being healthy. Yeah, so enjoy your food, mm -hmm. spend time with the family, right. friends, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then um, they'll be pretty much a good um, formula for staying healthy, I think, yes. sounds mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you so much again for being a part of our uh, episode today. I hope that our audience takes some good points and um, Lola, where can, uh, I guess, the, the public find more about the, the PAN plan? Okay, the PAN plan is available through the Department of Health's website at www.health.hawaii.gov and look under publications and you'll find it there. The other is you can follow us on, new, on Facebook, so www.healthyhawaii, um, it's Hawaii is H-I, and so find us on Facebook as well. Yeah, and like your page so that they can get updates. Right? That's right. <laughs> and, and look at our latest ads, too, um, in terms of obesity prevention that we did with youth. They're a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, stay in, stay in touch with us. Great. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, thank you so much for your time today. Um, we hope that you will find this information useful, and we hope to see you again. So, again, my name is Laura Lynn Salamanca, and we'll see you next time. Ahoi ho. Thank you. It's a beautiful day. Lucky that we live Hawaii. 24 7, 365. Swimming in the ocean anytime. 